Hello and welcome. This is Michelle Christensen of One Noteworthy Life, and this video is a quick OneNote tutorial on how to hide table borders in OneNote. I'm filming in OneNote for Windows 10, and if you're using a different version or device, your screen may look a little bit different than mine. Now, if you aren't familiar with tables, they are a feature in OneNote that allows you to keep content on a page separated into cells created by the rows and columns of your table. Tables lack most of the functionality of a spreadsheet, such as being able to add a column of numbers or do data analysis. Tables are mainly a way to format the elements on your page. If you aren't familiar with tables, in OneNote, there's a link in the description of this video to a tables playlist that contains a video introduction to tables. When you create a table in OneNote, the default is to have the borders of the cells shown. However, you do have the option of hiding those borders, and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Hiding the borders of a table doesn't impact the way the table functions, but it does give you a slightly different look and may have a practical function if you're trying to precisely place content on a background. You can have the benefits of a table without seeing a table. So now I'm going to show you how to hide the borders on this table. For this demo, I'm using this 4x4 table on the screen populated with some sample data. I've included a variety of things in my table, including a few digital images and some different colors. In order to hide the borders, select the entire table. Put your cursor in the upper left and scroll across and then down to select your entire table. From the table menu, which is up here at the top, we're going to pick this option that's almost all the way over to the right. It's second from the right and it says hide borders and I'm going to click it. And now you can see that the table borders have disappeared. To get your borders back, you're just going to reverse that process. We're going to highlight the table again, and we're going to go back to the table menu and into the same uh, button that says hide borders and click it, and the borders have reappeared. So now that we know how to do this, um, you might be wondering why might you want to use this? And I can think of two reasons that you might want to hide your table borders. So one is for graphic appeal. It has a slightly different look to it. And the other one I kind of mentioned earlier is where you might want to put content over a background and a table could help you to do that. So I'm just going to show you a couple of examples of how hiding your table borders might make your table look a little bit different. So this is a, a um, ombre to-do list I made. Um, and this the demo for this is actually in the tables playlist. On the left, you see the original with the borders, and I don't know how much is going to show up on your screen, but if you look at this, um, in the lower rows where the color is darkest, you can really see the table borders between the rows of color. And then at the top, you can see the table border between the table and the white background. Over on the right, I have hidden the borders, and I think it looks a lot more like a sticker. It looks like something you'd see in a paper planner, and I feel like it's just a lot more, um, has a lot more graphic appeal, like it's very um, sharp and delineated. But either way is fine. It's just kind of whatever you like. The second example is also a sticker I made with tables. And again, the one on the left is... Um, you can see the lines next to the to-do box, and then on the one on the right, you can't see those lines. In this case, I kind of like having the lines showing so that you know where to type, um, but I don't know. I might, I might want to use the one on the right without any lines showing. Again, it's just a matter of what you like. Whichever one appeals to you more is perfectly fine to use. The other use case for hiding table borders is that it may help you to put content over a background. In this case, I'm going to demonstrate how using a table with hidden borders might help you write over a form. So this is a very basic form that I got from Microsoft Word. It's one of their templates. I saved it as a PDF and then inserted it into OneNote and set the form as a background. If you don't know how to do this, I have a video linked in the description that shows you how to insert a PDF into OneNote. So the first thing I'm going to do is to insert a 3x8 table. So I'm going to click Insert, and then Table, and then 3x8. The reason I picked 3x8 is because I, I have three columns on my form, and 8 is the most it gives you in the original menu. You can always add more rows later. Uh, that's just what they start with. 
And then I'm going to drag that table up to the top row, and I'm going to hold down my Alt key while I'm dragging to get a really precise drag. So, so what I've done is line up the very first row of the table so that it lines up with the first row of the form, like the bottom of the first row of the table lines up with the bottom of the first row of the form. Now I'm going to go to the, my cursor is in the top row of the table. I'm going to go to the home menu and I'm going to use my text size to increase the size of that row so that it matches up with my form. Now normally I would just do this with trial and error, but I did that before filming and I happen to know it's a size 16. So that threw my alignment off, so again I'm going to drag my table up. And now you can see that that uh, my table lines up pretty precisely with my form row, at least for the first row. So now that we know a size 16 is a good size, we want to resize the rest of the table. So I could select all of those remaining rows in the way I showed you before, where you put your cursor in the top left cell and then scroll across and down. But there's another way to do it, which is I'm going to select this whole row. And I'm going to hold down my shift key and select the last row. And that selected all of those remaining rows. And I'm going to go back up to my uh, home menu and select font size 16. Now you can see that we are really close to lined up. I might want to just wiggle this down just a touch. So now our table uh, row height lines up with the form. You could add more rows if you want, but I'm just going to leave it at 8 to keep the video nice and short. Now um, for the column width, what I'm going to do is hold down the Alt key and I'm going to drag the table over to the left to get it lined up on the left side. So I'm holding down the Alt key and what I'm going to try and do, this uh, left hand line here that represents the left edge of the table, I want that lined up with the left of the writing portion of my form. So it's not going to be lined up with the left of the actual piece of paper that the form would be printed on, but it's going to be lined up to the left so that it's right here. So that way when you start to type in that cell, it will, will be lined up with the left of the line on which you would write. Now using your cursor, if you put it on the border of this first column, we can drag it out so that it fits the width of the first column perfectly. And now I'm going to repeat that for columns two and three. I'm just using my cursor, putting it over the um, vertical border between the two columns and dragging it out. I'm going to do that one more time for this third column, dragging it all the way over. Now the table perfectly matches the form. In this case, the table borders, they're not super intrusive, but you can probably imagine a case where you might not want to see the borders at all. And, you know, you might not even like them in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and hide those table borders and see if we can get this looking a little better. So from our table menu, hide borders. And now, you, literally, the table's invisible. So if we put some data in there, I could say it's 2, 25, 20, 20. The problem or diagnosis is headache. Nope. Um, I did not size all of my fonts to 16. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And progress notes. Um, uh, let's see. Let's bring, okay. So, um, you can see it kind of looks nice. It's centered. It looks, you know, clean, visual, etc. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, it kind of has a nice look, and and this perhaps is not a great example, um, but I have seen cases where people have used tables to fill out, you know, kind of more complicated forms, like where it's not just row after row of type, and it helped them out. So there's two points I want to I want to just mention if you're going to use this. You still have to pay attention to your tables even if you can't see the borders. So you can accidentally make a row too high or too wide without knowing it. And we just saw that when I went to type continued headache. The word was too long for um, the width of my column and it went down into the next one. And this would actually make our cell too tall and it would throw off the whole rest of the form. So that's something you do need to be concerned about. Second, you can't lock your row or column height in OneNote as you as of the time of the filming, this filming. A lot of people have asked for this feature, so I hope that we get it soon, but for the time being, it's not in OneNote. Now you may be able to get this feature with an add-on program that you can buy. And so that's it. That is how to hide table borders and some reasons why you might want to. If you want to see more OneNote tutorials like this, as well as videos on organization, productivity, and life management, please subscribe by hitting the subscribe button and let me know you like this by hitting the thumbs up button. If you want to talk to other OneNote users on Facebook, join us in one or both of the communities I host, the OneNote Bullet Journal group or the OneNote for iPad group. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.